Welcome to Global Derivatives 2015. We have us with us today uh, Marcus Lopez de Prado, who's a Senior Managing Director at Guggenheim Partners. Uh, he's also held a number of senior positions in various uh, firms within the industry, notably uh, Tudor and Hess, and he's also a Research Fellow at uh, Berkeley Lab as well. I suppose the first question I'd like to ask you is on your new book, which you co-authored on high-frequency trading. What are the main insights that you can share with us uh, from your book? This is a very polemic topic, uh, high frequency trading. So yeah. uh, the main goal that the co-editors and I wanted to achieve was number one, to have a objective look at high frequency trading mm. without any polemic, just describe how high frequency yeah. trading works. And second, to explain that in fact, there are many types of high frequency trading. Yeah. There is a special type in FX, in equities, in futures, commodities. So when people uh, think about high frequency trading, normally what they have in mind is uh, stocks. But that's not the only kind of high frequency yeah. trading. And not all high frequency traders uh, are, are born the same. Yeah. So we wanted to clarify how high frequency trading works and in fact all the different kind of flavors of high frequency trading. In terms of the conference, you're speaking today on good back testing practice and also solutions to the multiple testing problem. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah. The problem of multiple testing is emerging as a critical problem in empirical finance. Yeah. Um, it has been uh, asserted that, in fact, most discoveries in empirical finance may just be wrong. Mm -hmm. And the reason is a methodological error that has been made for decades mm -hmm. in finance, and it is not to take into account multiple testing. So uh, now the goal of my presentation is to describe how to address these problems and uh, hopefully to set empirical finance on a, a stronger foundation for the future. And do you think more broadly that backtesting itself is flawed? And is there such a thing as a, as a good backtest? Or do you think backtesting should be dispensed with altogether? I think in academic settings, probably backtesting is not a very strong um, research tool. And the reason is uh, there is no centralized data set of all trials. Yeah. As a result, we don't know how many trials are taking place. and Consequently, selection bias takes place. Yeah. Now, in an industrial setting, uh, backtesting, I think, it still makes a lot of sense. A company can enforce uh, its employees, even legally enforce them, to report all trials, and therefore multiple testing can be taken into account. Yeah. So my, I guess my conclusion is backtesting is okay in financial firms where all trials can be logged and, and yeah. studied to deflate results, but in academic settings at the moment it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So, you know, a lot of the financial publications in journals mm -hmm. are uh, doing backtesting and historical simulation and that's probably wrong. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for talking with us today and I look forward to reading more of your research. Thank you. Thanks.